My dear and beloved in Christ, it's not by chance or without meaning that Catholics call upon the Blessed Virgin Mary as our spiritual mother. All the love and meaning associated with motherhood makes this title dear to us and deepens our spiritual life. The importance of a good mother's influence upon her child is incalculable. Since our soul is immortal, Mary's spiritual motherhood is far more vital to us. According to the fathers of the church, on two occasions, Mary became our spiritual mother. St. Albert the Great says the first was when she consented to be the mother of God. She, from that moment, asked our Savior, asked our salvation from God with intense ardor and took it to heart in such a way that from that moment, as a loving mother, she also bore us in her womb. The second occasion on which the Blessed Virgin Mary became our spiritual mother and brought us forth to the life of grace was when she offered to the Eternal Father the life of her beloved Son on Mount Calvary with such bitter sorrow and suffering. St. Augustine declares that as she then cooperated by her love in the birth of the faithful to the life of grace, she became the spiritual mother of all who are members of the one head, Christ Jesus. Our Lady cares for us as her children. No earthly mother attends to our temporal and spiritual needs as she does. We're blessed to live under the protection of so loving and powerful a mother. She is a secure refuge in all our fears and dangers. My dear and beloved in Christ, in a vision of St. Bridget, our Heavenly Mother spoke these words. As a mother, on seeing her son in the midst of of the swords of his enemies, would use every effort to save him. So do I and will I, with much greater power, effectively aid all sinners who seek my mercy. If we have recourse to our Heavenly Mother and seek her aid and protection in our afflictions and temptations, we will always obtain her help. St. Ambrose cried out, O happy confidence! O safe refuge, the mother of God is my mother. How firm then should be our confidence since our salvation depends upon the judgment of our Redeemer and a tender mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Just as a child calls upon his mother in every fear, danger, and injury, so too we should constantly run to our Heavenly Mother in every fear, in danger. She will never fail us. And as St. Alphonsus talks about the promptitude of Mary in assisting those who invoke her, truly unfo- unfortunate are we, poor children of Eve. We have to wander about in this veil of tears as exiles from our heavenly country and to weep over our many afflictions of body and soul. But blessed is he who in the midst of these sorrows often turns to the comforter of the afflicted, to the refuge of sinners, to the great mother of God, and devoutly calls upon her and invokes her. Oh, how prompt is this good mother to help those who call upon her. Navarino declares that the Blessed Virgin Mary not only runs but flies to assist those who invoke her. Nor should the multitude of our sins diminish our confidence that Mary will grant our petitions when we cast ourselves at her feet. The angels constantly guard the clients of Mary from the assaults of hell. Mary is called the moon, as we say fair as the moon, meaning not only that she is as swift as the moon in its course by flying to the aid of those who invoke her, but that she is still more so for her, for those who love her, that in all our wants and in all our needs, she comes to promptly to help us. She's more ready to help us than we are to ask for her aid. 
Mary, even when living in this world, for example, at the marriage of Cana, helped those, the bride and bridegroom, who needed, were in distress. My dear beloved in Christ, I'd just like to uh, explain a few statuaries at the Rosary Chapel at Lourdes. Um, they've got beautiful mosaics of all the 15 mysteries of the Rosary, but some of the titles in the Litany of Our Lady, um, there are st- carved statuaries. For example, uh, uh, Mother Most Amiable, Mother of Our Creator, Mother of Christ, etc., and I'd just like to go through some of them. Unfortunately, there's none of Queen of Angels. But we'll go through a few of them. Virgin Most Merciful. It shows some repentant sinners kneeling before the Blessed Virgin Mary. She has her arms extended out to obtain for them forgiveness from God. And then the one Virgin Most Powerful. Mary's in a commanding position, pointing to a monster representing the seven capital sins. And then for refuge of sinners, there's two sinners are standing as they weep on her shoulder. And Our Lady holds her arms around them. For comfort of the afflicted, Our Heavenly Mother is seated as she consoles two persons. One appears to be very sorrowful and depressed. The other is also very sad with, the, with his hand on the top of his head and one elbow on his knee. And then there's help of Christians. Mary has her arms extended as she helps a little boy and girl together with a group of children. So St. Bernard says, when you follow her, you will not go astray. When you pray to her, you will not despair. When you think of her, you will not err. When she holds you up, you will not fall. When she protects you, you will not fear. When she leads you, you will not be fatigued. When she favors you, you arrive safely. She keeps her son from striking us. She keeps the devil from hurting us. She keeps our virtues from escaping us. She keeps our merits from being destroyed. She keeps our graces from being lost. So I'd just like to close with the story. Cardinal Messia stated, It was the year 1850, and I, persecuted by the heretical Bishop Salama, was taking refuge in the mountains of Abyssinia. With me were two servants and a donkey loaded with provisions. It was shortly after midnight. There was a beautiful moon that night. We saw its pale rays through the leaves of a bamboo forest. Not without fear did I hear the far-off roar of wild beasts. But trusting in Mary's protection, of which I had certain almost visible evidence during my many years in the missions, I began to invoke her by singing the litany. So this is going through this forest, and it's at midnight, and he's singing the litany of Our Lady. With those invocations, I felt my courage increasing and also my hope of escaping danger unharmed. Suddenly, however, our donkey flew into a fit of rage and the water jugs he carried crashed to the ground along with the container of provisions. The two servants disappeared into the forest after him and I was left alone in that frightening solitude. But I continued to sing my litany. Unexpectedly, I heard the rustling of branches and I saw leaves moving. At first I thought a hyena was approaching for they are very common in those parts. They rarely attack people and are little feared. Instead, however, I saw a short distance away a leopard as big as a calf with eyes like coals. In terror, I glanced down and saw my bare feet. I recalled then that the sight of bare flesh enrages the beasts. I quickly covered my feet with the sheet I had wrapped about myself. Head up, unmoving, the leopard watched me with blazing eyes. I pressed my missionary cross to my heart and prayed to the blessed virgins whose praises I had sung. 
I begged her to save me. It was then that the leopard turned around and slowly withdrew. It took me a while to regain my lost wits and to continue on my way. Before long, my servants met me with the donkey, again loaded with provisions, and I, after thanking the Blessed Virgin, began my journey once more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.